It's a beautiful October Saturday in the Mid-State and a perfect day for Conference USA's oldest rivalry. The Western Kentucky Hilltoppers Toppers travel 100 miles south from Bowling Green to Floyd Stadium in Murfreesboro to take on the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee. What's going on everybody alongside a masked up and socially distant Jeremy Kellum, I'm Jake Rose and we are broadcasting live today from the Bragg Media and Entertainment Building across campus from Floyd Stadium here at Middle Tennessee State University. Jeremy and I will be doing our best to stay socially distant, wearing our mask when need be, as will our entire broadcast crew that has worked so hard this week to put this broadcast on air for you today on ESPN3. Jeremy, let's talk a little ball. Both of these teams came into the 2020 season thinking they were going bowling, but right now they are combined 0 for 5. Let's start with Western Kentucky 0 and 2, and they started off the season week one on the road against their in-state rival Louisville. Dropped a tough one, defense and special teams kept them in it, but man, week two, tough loss at home as the Liberty Flames came into Bowling Green and absolutely rolled over the toppers defense, but Western has had a whole week to think about it and improve before this rivalry game. Yes, despite their record, their bright spot has been their quarterback play by Terrell Pigram. He's one of six quarterbacks in the nation that has thrown four TDs and zero interceptions. He's also Western Kentucky's leading rusher, so it's going to be very important for him to have a great game in the air and on the ground. They expect to get the W this afternoon. And for Middle Tennessee, they come into this week four matchup 0-3, and, and it's hard to imagine a rougher start for this Middle Tennessee offense. The first two weeks of the season, just 14 total points, including getting blanked in week one by Army, 42 to nothing. But last week, a close loss in San Antonio, but signs of life from Asher O'Hara and the Middle Tennessee defense. Yes, Kieran Pierce, wide receiver number nine, had a career day, seven receptions, 107 yards. He's first in Conference USA, 14th in the nation with seven receptions per game, but one thing he has not done yet is taste the pay dirt, and I think tonight MTSU will need him to get in the end zone at least once, maybe even twice, if they expect to win today. It is the 70th edition of 100 Miles of Hate coming up from Murfreesboro. Kickoff just around the corner right here on ESPN. Welcome back to Murfreesboro. 100 miles of hate rivalry, Western Kentucky, Middle Tennessee, 107th all-time meeting. Middle Tennessee leads the all-time series, 35, 33, and one tie. These teams, of course, don't like each other very much, but they, every time they get together, it's a close ball game. Five of the last eight meetings have ended in overtime. Western Kentucky got the better of middle last year, 31, 26, 14, Points in the fourth quarter for Western Kentucky, including the game-winning run from Gage Walker, who will get the start tonight in the backfield for Western Kentucky. And Western Kentucky won the toss, but deferred to the second half, so Middle Tennessee will receive to start this one. Alongside Jeremy Kellum, I'm Jake Rose, broadcasting in the Bragg Media and Entertainment Building on the campus of Middle Tennessee State University. Limited attendance today here at Floyd Stadium. About 7,000 people allowed into the venue as long as they are wearing masks. And we are underway from Floyd Stadium as fair catch is called for. And Middle Tennessee will start on their own 25-yard line. And Asher O'Hara and the Middle Tennessee offense will take the field first. Middle Tennessee coming off that heartbreaking 35-37 loss last weekend, last Friday night, against the Roadrunners of UTSA. O'Hara the junior, his second season as the starter, will throw on first down. All data thrown out, here comes the blitz. And D'Angelo Malone the reigning Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year picks up his second sack of the season. And Jeremy, I think we can credit the Western Kentucky defensive secondary with that sack. Yeah, that's a coverage sack all day, and Malone is off to a great start. Second down, O'Hara going to be brought down inside the 20. And Eli Brown, it looked like, was the first hilltopper on the stop. A grad student spent a couple of seasons at Kentucky before transferring back to his home city of 
Bowling Green be closer to his family. And now it's third and long on the opening drive. And if you're empty issue, this is not where you want to be behind the sticks. Quick pass near side to Jaron Pierce. Gets on the positive side of the 25 before being knocked out of bounds by Roger Cray, the senior out of Lake City, Florida. And it's a very quick three and out for the Blue Raiders. Not the start Rick Stockstill was hoping for in this rivalry game. Yes, it's definitely not the start. I think with the spread in Tony Franklin's system, you, you try to score fast, but sometimes you end up having to punt even faster. Dayton Wade, the sophomore receiver, is back for the Hilltoppers. As the punt will drop just shy of the 40-yard line. And the Hilltoppers will have pretty good field position on their first drive. Yes, as early on, the, the WKU is having their way. Uh, they came out, got a stop, and now they're expecting to get to a fast start on offense. Talked about Tyrell Pigram, the starting quarterback for this Western Kentucky squad. Grad transfer from Maryland, was named the starter on September 2nd. And uh, when Western Kentucky made that announcement, he got a pretty cool shout out from arguably the biggest Terrapin fan and alumni that there is, Scott Van Pelt, giving him a shout out on Twitter. Pigram taking a shot downfield on first down. Ball popped out as he was looking on that far sideline as a flag comes in. I'm interested in seeing who is, who's the flag is on because it looks like the DB was in great position. He had turned around, had his back towards the receiver, looking back at the ball. He was looking for Xavier Lane, the senior from Montgomery, Alabama. And this Western Kentucky squad, this wide receiving core will be without. Jacor Pearson, who left the team after that loss at home to Liberty. He has entered the transfer portal. He was the team's second leading receiver coming, excuse me, after that game. Nine receptions, 96 yards, as it's going to be an offensive pass interference call against Xavier Lane, 15-yard penalty. Pigram will take it himself and will pick up a handful on first and 25. Great tackle right there by Quincy Riley. Uh, and Coach Helton for WKU, this is not what he wanted. He, he does not want to be behind the stick. He does not like negative plays, and they're already starting off second and 23. Second and long on the opening drive for Western Kentucky, an offense that returns 15 returning lettermen and nine players with multiple starts from a season ago. That offensive line absolutely loaded. Four full-time starters are back from last season's squad. 100 combined career starts on the front five for Western Kentucky as Pigram, his Pigram pass is knocked down. away by Quincy Riley, the red shirt freshman Mitchell from Kinsley Columbia, South Carolina. Back-to-back -back great plays by Quincy Riley. First on the tackle, now on the PBU, great job. Coach Gilstrap, the cornerback coach, is really coaching him up out there. Quincy Riley, the redshirt freshman, was injured in week three last year against Duke, took a red shirt, and has found a home in the starting lineup for the Blue Raiders defense. Third and long for Western Kentucky. Handoff up the middle and going nowhere is Gage Walker, Middle Tennessee, all over it. Looked like Brett Shepard, the senior from Buford, Georgia, was the first to make contact with Walker. And both teams with a quick three and out on their opening drive. And if I'm defensive coordinator, Coach Schaefer, this is how I wanted my defense to respond. WKU gets a stop, now we come out and get a stop as well. Out to punt will be John Haggerty, the Aussie who hasn't even been in America for a full two calendar years yet. He's only played football for one year, and that one year he was named the Conference USA first team member. Short punt here, and Middle Tennessee will have good field position on their second drive 
as they will start about the 45 yard line. And we're going to take a quick break with 11.29 to go here in the first quarter. We are scoreless here in Conference USA's longest running rivalry game. 100 miles of hate right here on ESPN3. I don't know if Ronan's trying to talk to me or not, but uh, I can. A backup camera. Oh, and Bluetooth. And that uh, little compartment thingy, you know, where, where you put your sunglasses? Yeah. You found the perfect car. Now get the perfect loan with Ascend. We've got low rates, flexible terms, and applying online is a snap. I'm going to name her Betty. <laughs> Auto Loans from Ascend Federal Credit Union. Tennessee Lottery, someone wins. Come on, boys! The Hick Games are back in town! We're here for some Hick Games! Just sold them. Look! Those fellas have it. Follow them dogs! Hey, fellas! You got some of those new Hick Games? What? These? You aren't gonna play those alone, are you? You boys mind sharing some of that fun? Sure. Well, why do I owe you? How about a hug? Ah! Chase down a whole load of fun with Hit Games, only from the Tennessee Lottery. Hey, what's your dog's name? Lucky! <laughs> Tennessee offense back on the field for their second drive. Throw across the middle, he finds Pierce, picks up about five yards. And so Asher O'Hara and Pierce are already connecting today, continuing what they had from last game against UTSA. Second catch for Pierce so far today. Leading receiver this year with 22 catches as Jay McDonald nowhere to go, swallowed up by the front seven of Western Kentucky. And here it comes, a big third down. MTSU needs to get this first down, continue to give the defense a rest, and just to gain some momentum as an offense. Third and seven for Middle Tennessee. Staying in the shotgun. No hair. Here comes the and knocked down. Eli Brown. Second sack in the first quarter for the Hilltopper defense. You know, right there, I think that's a mixture of a, a coverage sack and also just getting pressure. But O'Hara has to get rid of the ball. If nothing opens up, he either has to get out of the pocket or throw the ball away. Kyle Ulbrich back out to punt for his second punt. Western almost got a paw on it. And a beautiful punt from Ulbrich. Fielded inside the five from Dayton Wade. And Western Kentucky has a whole field to go here on their second drive. Yes, that's a great job by MTSU really flipping the field right now. MTSU has to come out and get a stop right here as they have WKU backed up. One thing Western wants to get going offensively is for Gage Walker to find his flow. Just 11 carries, 34 yards last week against Liberty. Came into this game just 53 yards rushing. Last year he was second in the conference with over 1,200 yards on the ground, 93 yards per game a season ago for Gage Walker. And if they can get him going, that's going to take things, make things a lot easier for Pigram. And it's Walker up the middle, nowhere to go, swallowed up by the Blue Raiders front line. Great job by the Blue Raiders D-line, being able to control the line of scrimmage, get pressure, and stop Gage Walker in the backfield. 
Western Kentucky playing it safe on first down deep in their own territory as it looked like senior Rakavian Poydras making his 43rd career appearance leads this team actually tied with fellow senior and linebacker DQ Thomas in terms of appearances for Middle Tennessee second and 11 Bigram across the middle finds a receiver Looks like he had Dayton Wade, who actually makes his first catch on the season, sophomore. So this sets up a big third down right here. WKU needs to get a first down to continue to try to gain momentum. Third down and three. Handoff up the middle goes to Walker, and he's going to be close to a first down. Xavier Lane certainly thinks Western has enough as some pushing and shoving as these two teams typically don't like each other. You know a lot about this. You've played in this game a handful of times. Yes, it's a big rival uh, rivalry. Like you said, we don't like each other. Um, you know, because there's so much on the line. You have recruiting on the line, conference position on the line. So you just really want to get this W of your cross-state rival. So it's fourth down and one. And the Western Kentucky punting unit will take the field. So two drives, two punts for both squads as Middle Tennessee will take over where they took over on their second drive about their own 45-yard line with 7.52 to go here in the first. Still scoreless. Welcome back to Floyd Stadium. Middle Tennessee taking over for their third drive on the game as Asher O'Hara gets into enemy territory and stopped about the 45-yard line close to a Blue Raider first down, and that is the most positive play that we have seen in four, now five, combined drives between these two squads. Grand total of 14 total yards until this play right here around the left side is Shatan Mobley. Yes, and I like the play call by Coach Franklin on first down. He wanted to establish, get some positive yards. Uh, and So going into second down, they weren't behind the sticks. So a great job by him. Eli Brown, another stop. As Middle Tennessee picks up the first first down of the game, Asher O'Hara again up the middle. And Brown and Kyle Bailey, two seniors. The only two senior linebackers in this nickel defense for Tyson Helton's Hilltoppers. Second and five, O'Hara pitches out to Mobley and he's gonna be wrapped up by Kyle Bailey, the former safety, who moved to linebacker before last year and led this team with 109 tackles a year ago. Hard to do it much better than that. I know, great, great job keeping leverage, kept the outside shoulder free, came up, make a, a great form tackle on the plate. And it's another third down for Middle Tennessee, 0-2 so far in the ball game. O'Hara to pass, looking near sideline. He has Jaron Pierce, and he's knocked out at the 30. There goes that guy again, Jaron Pierce. is continuing his great start from last week into this game. They need to connect up more times than not if they expect to win tonight. That's third catch for Pierce tonight, knocked out of bounds by Omari Alexander, who had himself a ball game against Louisville. Fumble recovery on a muff punt. He blocked a punt had an interception and a tackle for loss. Not bad in a homecoming game. Alexander is senior from Louisville. And Middle Tennessee has their second first down. Here comes the blitz from the outside. O'Hara will step up and he'll pick up a yard or two as we've got a flag down. Looked like Juwan Jones. First down. Yes, it looks like WKU sent the nickel off the edge and caught the tackle off guard and he had to end up grabbing him. 
So move the Blue Raiders back 10 yards. Their first penalty. And this is where Coach Stock and Coach Franklin do not want their offense to be, and that's behind the sticks. O'Hare to throw again, looking over the middle, oh. trying to find Yusuf Ali, but Devin Key, the senior from Lexington, Kentucky, and a new father, was Playing. in on the stop. Playing double duty. Great college player and a father. That's right, gave birth to Drace Legend Key on August 13th. As Yusuf Ali will get tended to on the sideline. He delivered a nice pop across the middle. O'Hare on second and long. Trying to find room out of the pocket, throws downfield, has a man on the sideline and caught on that far sideline. Yes, now that great pass by Astro O'Hara, because now they, they're in a manageable third down. They were just in second and 25, not in a manageable, manageable third down. Great it's job by the MT's offense. It's number 86, Jamichael Thompson, his first catch on the season for the Blue Raiders. Third and four, near sideline. Back to Pierce. I'm not a fan of that, that particular play call. Um, I, I like for you to go forward, at least get to the sticks to try to get the first down. Running a bubble or a now route at this uh, time at that distance is not a great play call. And that's Antoine Kincaid, the backup defensive back. As we're gonna have a field goal attempt as Cruz Holt. It's blocked! And picked up on the sideline by Western Kentucky. Might have been Trey Meadows. They got a hand on it. And I knew coming into this game that special teams will be a big part because WKU had two big plays special teams wise against Louisville. So Western Kentucky will have great field position on their third drive after the blocked kick from Cruz Holt. And Western is in business. Welcome back to Murfreesboro. Western Kentucky picking up on their own 41-yard line after the 42-yard field goal attempt from Cruz Holt was blocked as Pigram was shoved out of bounds on that play. Three drives so far from Western Kentucky, just 12 total yards so far for the Hilltoppers. Jeremy, what are you seeing from their offense so far? Well, right now they're falling behind the sticks, getting in second and long, third and longs. Um, right now they're, kind of, they're moving the ball well. It looks like they're going to be in a manageable third down. So Xavier Lane with a catch, tackled on the play by Kenneth Major, the junior from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. So we'll see if they can convert this third and two right here. They really need it. The offense needs to stay on, on the field to build momentum and give their defense a break. Third and two, Western Kentucky has options running the ball with Pigram and Walker. Pigram the leading rusher for this Western Kentucky team so far, 142 yards on the ground on 31 carries. He'll keep it himself on third and two. And he's gonna be short. As Quinn Darius Dunnigan the redshirt freshman from Chattanooga in on the stop. Yes, that was a great play. Great tackle for loss by Dunnigan. Sets up for a fourth and two right now. Coach Tyson Helton trusting his offense can pick up a couple of yards on this fourth and two in their own territory. Pigram to throw in the pocket. Has a man, it's Xavier Lane, and he's got enough for a first down as he is wrestled to the ground. And coming into this game, Xavier Lane had one reception, but it looks like they're really involving him in the offense, especially since two of their top receivers decided to transfer over the break. So 
So first and 10 for the Hilltoppers in Middle Tennessee territory. Flea flicker. Ingram all day to throw, taking a shot towards the end zone. And great coverage by Quincy Riley as Pigram was looking for his own number four, Mitchell Tinsley. There goes that guy again, Quincy Riley. Johnny on the spot. Played good over the top coverage, didn't bite on the fake. And almost made a play on the ball. Second and 10 from the 42 yard line. Pigram 33 of five so far here in the first quarter against Middle Tennessee, completing just 57% of his passes so far this season. Bigger more time to throw, takes a shot, another shot towards the end zone, in and out of the hands of Mitchell Tinsley. And a beautiful throw from Tyrell Pigram. And Tinsley just couldn't hang on to it. This time they got behind Riley, but Fortunate for him, they weren't able to complete the pass. Third and 10 for Western Kentucky. Taking a couple of deep shots the last two plays, and now they need 10 for a first down. Five-man rush, Pigram steps up, escapes the pressure. And he's going to deliver a hit and step out of bounds just short of the 30-yard line. And you, see, and you see why it's so important to have a mobile quarterback, because when everything breaks down, he can use his legs to get out the pocket. Good enough for a first down for Western Kentucky. So far, seven plays, 29 yards on this drive. As we approach one minute left here in the first quarter. And off to Walker, and he's wrapped up by Rakavian Poydras. That's the second time that Poydras has broken through that Western Kentucky offensive line and made a tackle. And right now, MTSU D-line is definitely controlling the line of scrimmage, getting pushed back, getting tackled for losses. And this is a defensive line that has struggled a little bit. They've allowed a ton of rushing yards so far this season, 227 yards allowed on the ground per game for this Middle Tennessee defense. Here comes the blitz from Middle Tennessee on second and 10. Pigram nowhere to go. And he's brought down by the senior DQ Thomas. And that is DQ Thomas, second sack of the season. That was a great play to send pressure. Great dial up by D coordinator Coach Schaefer. Second sack of the season for Thomas, 14th in his career. He is seventh all-time in Middle Tennessee history in sacks. As that will do it for the first frame here in Murfreesboro, Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. Scoreless after one. Stay with us on ESPN3. Second quarter action underway here at Floyd Stadium as Pigram throws far sideline. And picking up about 10 yards is Dayton Wade, his second catch as DQ Thomas has another tackle after he just picked up his second sack on the season. And it's fourth and nine for the Hilltoppers on what was third and 21. MTSU is doing a great job keeping WKU in third and long and fourth and long. And now it goes a field goal attempt. A long field goal attempt for Braden Narvison. Just his second field goal attempt on the season. Knocked home a 43-yarder last week against Liberty. And Narvison is two for two on the season as he knocks home the 47-yard field goal attempt. 
And I think right that was a good stop by MTSU's defense. They have to be happy with their play. Coach Schaefer has to be proud of the D-line. Um, just everybody flying around, getting tackled for losses, and, and continuing to put WKU's offenses in a negative position. So 11 plays, 30 yards on the drive for Western Kentucky. 47-yard field goal. Good from Braden Narvison. Not bad for a kid who wasn't even on the roster until eight weeks ago. Number 25 for Western Kentucky has changed his number to number 87. Well, that helps us. So C.J. Jones, the running back. Or it could be Bryson Washington, because there's two 25s. It's now number 87. College football, don't change. I'm assuming it's C.J. Jones because he's a running back. Middle Tennessee will take over again at their own 25-yard line. As Riley let it go over his head in the end zone, Middle Tennessee will take over with 14.09 to go here in the second quarter. And speaking of numbers, they've added the number zero into the, the number collection, so now players are wearing zero, and it, it kind of reminds me of when I played Little League. That's right, there was always one kid that always had to be zero, right? Or double zero. Double zero, yeah. That was usually a lineman in my, my Bantam League. O'Hara first and 10, going to keep it himself on the draw play. As you see a trend, Coach Franklin at first downs for the second consecutive time has started to drive off with a QB draw. He wants to get positive yards on the first down to put himself in a manageable second down position. Antoine Kincaid on the stop. Seeing a lot of run here early in the first half as McDonald is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Omari Alexander able to trip him up. And that was a great play. Looked like they might have sent him on a blitz from the secondary and he was able to wrap up, make a form tackle and now that puts MTSU in a third down and long, somewhere they don't want to be. So another third down for Middle Tennessee. They're just one for four today on third downs. They need seven. O'Hara to throw. Here comes the pressure. Tries to escape near sideline, looking downfield. And caught for a first down. Looks like he's got Jaron Pierce again as Trey Meadows, the senior from Greensboro, North Carolina, the nickelback, able to wrestle down Pierce. And as you can see, if O'Hara is in trouble, he's looking for number nine, Jaron Pierce. Great play, great catch. First down. First and 10 rolling out. O'Hara now going to tuck it and take a hit about the 40-yard line. Kyle Bailey on the stop. Jaron Pierce, the senior from Powder Springs, Georgia, came into this game leading Conference USA in catches. You mentioned it in the open, 22 catches, none for a touchdown so far this season. Mm -hmm. Just four career touchdowns for Pierce, but already five catches for 30 yards here in the first half. Second and eight. O'Hara near sideline to Mobley, makes one man miss into Western territory. And that is the biggest play on the day so far for the Blue Raiders. Yes, that's a great play, great catch, and great win by Mobley. He has two TDs on the season, two rushing TDs on the season, and one reception. So he, he has been the person that gets into the pay dirt for MTSU's offense this year. Leading rusher in terms of running back for the Blue Raiders. As Eli Brown in on another stop. Sets up for a second and long. MTSU wants to get at least five to six yards on it to, to set up a manageable third down. It was Mobley on the carry for a yard. And second and nine. O'Hara looking. Checks down to the near sideline and making the catch. As I'm looking at the O-line, I, I see Asher O'Hara most of the time has good time, but the DBs from WKU are playing great coverage. 
So you got to give credit to the secondary for WKU right now. Jermichael Thompson with his second catch on the afternoon and on the season. And it's third and five for Middle Tennessee on the Western Kentucky 39-yard line. O'Hare to throw. Checks down again. This is going to be good for a first down. And it's Jimmy Marshall, the senior from Macon, Georgia, with his sixth catch on the season. And that was a great third down play call. You don't want to go have to run a route 10 yards, 15 yards, just get to the sticks. They ran a speed out and were able to convert on third down. First and 10 for the Blue Raiders. O'Hara will keep it, but the play will be blown dead as flags fly. And this will likely be a false start against middle. False start, offense number 65. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. And if you're watching these two teams play for the first time, you can easily see why their quarterbacks are their leading rushers. They, they continuously call design runs for the QBs, both WKU and MTSU. Call goes against Marcus Greer, the center. One of three sophomores that start on the offensive line for Middle Tennessee. Four underclassmen, including Dorian Hitton, the freshman, on the offensive line for Rick Stockstill's Blue Raiders. The only senior upperclassman, Robert Jones, at right tackle. First and 15, O'Hara will tuck it. Finds a seam inside the 30 and will step out of bounds just shy of the 21-yard line. So Asher O'Hara doing some damage with his legs. And we saw this last weekend with Malik Willis of Liberty running all over this Hilltopper defense that just a year ago was the best defense in Conference USA. Tenth play of the drive, O'Hara sidesteps one man, and he is inside the 20-yard line, picks up a couple. Once again, positive, positive yardage on first down. That is the key to success for MTSU right now as they are on their longest drive of the day. There's a look at Jaden Hunter, the redshirt junior from Atlanta, transfer from Georgia a season ago. Started at linebacker, added a little bit of weight, and now he's on that front line for the Western Kentucky defense. O'Hare to throw, looking for the end zone. And almost caught as flags fly, looking for Jimmy Marshall. And here in the studio, I thought Marshall had a paw on it at first. Yeah, I actually thought he came down with it as well. Defense, number nine, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Dominique Bradshaw, the senior out of Dallas, typically backing up Roger Cray at that corner position. Well, he actually did get his paws on it, but the DB did a great job playing through the hands and was able to separate even though he got the P.I. call. I didn't really see a whole lot of contact from that angle until Bradshaw knocked the ball away. But either way, it's first and four. First and goal from the four. O'Hare on the rollout, looking for Mobley, lofts it to him, and touchdown, Middle Tennessee. The Raiders, good Tom Mobley, with the catch and the play. Fourth touchdown pass on the season for Asher O'Hara as Middle Tennessee goes 10 plays, 71 yards for the first touchdown of the ball game. Pass interference, offense number 81. 15-yard penalty, remains first I down. I take that back. Pass interference goes against C.J. Windham. I, I think what you got right there was a rub route. Um, so sometimes the referees miss it. Sometimes they catch it. On this particular play, they caught it, where a wide receiver rubs down on a defensive back, intentionally but unintentionally, um, and, and hope, hopefully you don't get the call like you just did right there. I bet as a defensive back, that drove you nuts. Those rub routes, those pick routes especially on goal line situations like that. Definitely, you know it's coming. You don't know if you'll get the benefit of the doubt from the ref. So move Middle Tennessee back to the 19 yard line. Oh, 
O'Hara to throw, looking far side, looking in zone. And just short as Roger Cray, the senior, was in on the coverage of C.J. Wyndham. Roger Cray did a great job. He did a man turn, he got his head back, was able to make a play. And he didn't get a P.I. call one for looking back since he was looking back at the receiver, I mean at the quarterback. Yeah, turning your head, that is so crucial if you're a defensive back. And I bet that's something that coaching staffs just preach over and over. Second and 19, O'Hara running out of time, throwing across the middle as a man. As Yusef Ali took a pop from Devin Key as a flag came in. And if this is targeting, this would be a huge loss for the toppers. Great catch by Yusuf Ali. Great tough catch. Looks like he's going to set him up with first and goal. Personal foul, targeting defense number 31. The play is under review. They called it on Antoine Kincaid. Starting safety out of Jacksonville. Let's take another look. So they called it on Kincaid, but that was definitely Devin Key, the other safety. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it would be a targeting call on this because he, he led with the shoulder. The shoulder did seem to make contact with the head, but I don't know about him targeting. He, didn't, he kept his head up on the tackle. Of course, every targeting call in college After football review, is reviewed. There is no foul for targeting. Be third down. So officials pick up the flag. Jeremy, you said from your angle you didn't see targeting. No, I didn't at all. Um, the DB, the key did a great job running. Um, he, he kept his head up on the contact. He dropped his shoulder, um, which they teach you to do, to keep your head up, move your head out the way, and just make contact with your shoulder and wrap up. Um, but there was no need to wrap up right there. That was a great solid hit. Devin Key, the senior from Lexington, making his 40th career start, leads this team. Second in tackles in Western Kentucky history since Western joined FBS in 2009, came into this game 276 career tackles. Third and six. O'Hara dropping back, now stepping up, looking for a target in the end zone. He's going to be just shy. He found Jimmy Marshall, but Deontay Ruffin was all over him, riding him to the ground, and it's going to be fourth and one, as you saw Ruffin trying to explain to Jimmy Marshall what is and isn't a touchdown. Huge play call coming up for Coach Franklin and Coach Stock right here. Middle Tennessee's offense stays on the field for fourth and one. I wonder if we're going to get a review. Timeout, Western Kentucky, their first. So Western Kentucky will burn their first timeout. And we will take a break with 7.54 to go. Middle Tennessee knocking on the door, but it's Western Kentucky that leads 3-0. Fourth down and one. O'Hara going to keep it, and O'Hara finds Pater. Second rushing touchdown on the season for O'Hara, and Middle Tennessee jumps out in front halfway through the second quarter. After the touchdown pass to Shatan Mobley was wiped off for the offensive pass interference, Middle Tennessee goes for it on fourth and goal, and it pays off. And I like and I like the play call, the gutsy play call by Coach Stock. At this point in the season, you need a victory. Um, you got to do anything, any means necessary. Holt's kick is good, and Middle Tennessee is on top. Seven to three, 14 plays, 75 yards, six minutes and 18 seconds. Middle on top of Western.
14 plays, 75 yards, 6 minutes and 18 seconds on the scoring drive, capped off by a one-yard touchdown run from quarterback Asher O'Hara. Middle Tennessee on top, 7-3. to three. Middle Tennessee, 75 of their 121 yards come on that last drive, and Jeremy Asher O'Hara has been playing very, very well so far. Yes, he's playing very well. He's taking care of the ball, and uh, Coach Franklin is, is calling a great game right now. On first downs, they're, they're ha doing a design quarterback run, or they're running the ball with the running back, because they're trying to get positive yards on first down to get in a manageable second and third down so they can convert and continue to move the chains, and that's what they did on that pass drive, and it led to a touchdown. There's a look on the numbers for O'Hara today, 11 of 13, 122 yards passing. This is his 13th straight start, taking over after Brent Stockstill was running the show for the Blue Raider offense for the previous four years. Leads this team in rushing the last two years. As Western Kentucky on first and 10, Pigram will be wrapped up in the backfield. Jordan Ferguson around the right end. Picks up his first sack on the season and the second of his career. Yes, MTSU defense is doing an amazing job getting pressure and putting WKU's offense behind the sticks, not second and long. When you have an offense in this position, now you can send pressure, you can drop in coverage, you can do different things with your defense. Second and 14, Pigram to throw again. Looking near sideline, has a man wide open, and it's Xavier Lane, and he gets dragged down by DQ Thomas coming from that linebacker spot, and almost to midfield for Western Kentucky. Now what you can't do as a defense when you do get them backed up is now you play soft. And look at the soft coverage by the corner and the DBs, now you give up a first down after putting them in first and 14. Second and 14, you get a first down. Called a play of 26, and that is by far the biggest play on the day for the Western Kentucky offense. He's really struggled to move the ball here in the first half. Very quick moving first half. Pigram again, first and 10. Here comes the pressure from the outside, and he's going to be wrapped up. Might have got a yard as Ferguson was in there again, as was. Poydras and Jordan Starling. That was definitely great coverage on the back end. Pigram had nowhere to throw the ball and had to tuck it and try to make the best of the play. Credit him with a rush of three yards. And call it second and seven. Walker up the middle, stiff arms one. And able to pick up a couple. Actually, that's C.J. Jones, the running back. And Quincy Raleigh on the tackle. Man, he's having a great game thus far. He's continuing to make plays in the running game and in the passing game as well. Sets up a third and short right here. Pigram now checking with the sidelines. On third and four, as Walker switches sides to the left side of Pigger. Option play, Walker up the middle, lot, lots of room. It'll break one tackle, ball is loose. Picked up by Middle Tennessee. And Middle with a huge turnover. As Western was putting together their best drive of the day so far, Greg Great able to wipe it. Yes, Greg Walker. Greg Great has been playing great all season. No pun intended with the last name, and I know he's a we're fraternity brothers. He's a part of the greatest fraternity in the world, <laughs> Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. As to Corey and Patterson, who picked up the fumble, and Middle Tennessee will have the ball with 5.02 to go when we come back. Corian Patterson, the sophomore from Ocala, Florida, back up defensive back, falling on that loose ball and a great swipe by Greg Great. Gives Middle Tennessee the ball and on first down, O'Hara picking up first down yardage. 
just shy of the 45-yard line. And, and as you see, the key to success for MTSU is on first down, design quarterback runs. And now it sets up for another first down. D'Angelo Malone able to tackle O'Hara on the drive, and O'Hara will keep it again, being patient as Devin Key comes up from his safety spot to make the stop. And it looks like Coach Franklin, the offensive coordinator, has said to himself, hey, until they stop it, I will continue with this plan. O'Hara very patient running the ball today. Kind of the knock on him last year was as soon as he dropped back to throw, he would take off and run. But here today, very patient in the pocket and also doing a good job of setting up his blockers. Here comes the blitz, and he throws it away as Trey Meadows was that was that was definitely Pierce. that was definitely a dangerous throw. You never you don't call it too many times from one hash to throw an out route to the other hash unless you have Patrick Mahomes at quarterback with that strong arm. Roger Cray in on the coverage as well, and now it's third and seven for Middle Tennessee. And not sure if defender made. Ball start, offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. It's Jalil Riles, the sophomore from Phoenix City, Alabama. That's, that's very interesting because it, it looks like the WKU defender crossed the line of scrimmage, which caused the tackle or the guard to flinch. But it's Ricky Barber, the redshirt freshman that's from Louisville that jumped originally for Western. And then Riles, maybe a little late on the uptake for the reaction. So it's third and 12. Here comes the blitz. O'Hara able to get rid of it, finds Pierce. Pierce is at midfield, breaks a couple of tackles, still going. And Pierce finally roped down. And a big play for Jaron Pierce, been calling his name all first half. And ladies and gentlemen, now you see why he's first in Conference USA, 14th in the nation with seven receptions per game. He's electric, consistent hands, and he makes plays with the ball. Very good job by O'Hara to stand in the pocket and find his man as O'Hara will keep it and be brought down by Kyle Bailey. And Middle Tennessee trying to get another seven on the board before halftime in what has been a very expedient first half. Here it's, in Murfreesboro. It has definitely went by fast. And once again, you've seen a design quarterback one on first down. Sets up a manager, a medium, second down. O'Hara to throw, second and six, looking back shoulder as Roger Cray in on the coverage as O'Hara was looking for C.J. Windham. And Cray all over him. No now, flags. Now, being a former DB, I'm a little biased. Roger Cray is very crafty. Watch the little snug here. He grabs the receiver to him, but the referee is on his backside, so he can't see the tub. So great play by Roger Cray. Cray missed the first six games last season with an injury in fall camp. Still made Bruce Feldman's 2019 freak list. 41-inch vertical. Third and six, O'Hara taking a shot to the end zone. Throws it short and picked off by Devin Key. Six career interception for the senior from Lexington, Kentucky. And coming into this game, Devin Key is second in, in tackles on WKU's defense. Has a forced fumble, now you can add an interception to that on the season. This is a great play. Coming out of deep middle, reads quarterback shoulders. The previous play gets the toe tap in. is under review. And did he get that toe tapped in before gaining complete control of that football? And that's going to be close, but Devin Key playing center field and getting his first interception on the seat. So after review, call on the field overturned. Get another look at it. Not sure. It's, it's, it's like he had it, but he doesn't really have it until then. Then his foot is out of bounds, that left foot. So great call by the refs. Cruz Holt out for the field goal attempt. First one was blocked. This one is good. 
So Middle Tennessee leads with 2.59 to go in the first half. 10 to three. It's a touchdown lead for the Blue Raiders at home here in the 107th meeting of 100 miles of hate. Middle Tennessee looking for a little bit of revenge after a tough loss last season to Western Kentucky. 31-26. And, and that was a great drive for, by the offense. Eight plays, 42 yards. Um, that We see the key to success. And I think MTSU, as this game goes on, is, is finding their identity as an offense and a defense and just in totality as a team. 44-yard field goal made by Cruz Holt. Eight plays, 42 yards. And the final three minutes, what do you want to see here from Western Kentucky's offense? Well, I want to see them come out and, and be able to manage the game clock. Um, you do not want MTSU to be able to get the ball back. they got to get first downs and hopefully get a field goal or a touchdown. Short kick and fair caught at the eight-yard line. And Western Kentucky will take over at the 25-yard line. Coming into the game, Coach Helton said that the magic number on the scoreboard for them uh, is 30, that he believes that their team needs to put up 30 points in order to have a chance to win. And right now, they're not on pace for 30 points. Um, and like he said, this puts more pressure on their defense because, I mean, if you're only scoring three, then now you have to come out here as a defense and pitch a, shot, a shutout. Put up 24 points last week in the loss, or two weeks ago, in the loss against Liberty, just 21 and in the loss against Louisville, but to come off a bye week and put up just three points against a Middle Tennessee defense that has really struggled this season cannot make Coach Helton happy. Here comes the blitz across the middle. Pigram has the tight end, Joshua Simpson. No, no it can't make you happy as an as a OC or head coach, especially when you watch the game against UTSA. And, you know, we gave up, uh, MTSU gave up so many yards, so you expect your offense to be able to do the same. Excuse me, Joshua Simon. Draw play up the middle is C.J. Jones, and that's enough for a first down. It appears Coach Schaefer is, is, is uh, you know, playing it safe a little bit, kind of playing bat, not attacking. As, and you see the big gains that WKU is getting now that they weren't getting early in the first half. So even with two and a half minutes here, you want to see Middle Tennessee throw a little more pr pressure? Definitely, I think you, you can't just play it safe. It's, it's, you still got a whole game left. Um, you're trying to get a victory, so. Pigram near side, finds Mitchell Tinsley, leading receiver for Western Kentucky this year. And, and as you can see, these are, these are turning into chunk plays. That's a nine yard game or, or first down. So I think Coach Schaefer and the defense has to tighten up right now. Yeah, and Western has certainly picked up the tempo a little bit on offense on this drive so far. And another first and 10 for the toppers. Pigram across the middle again. Patterson in on the stop as Dayton Wade with another catch. And, and another thing that this drive does, even if it doesn't end in points, it's a confidence builder. When they get into halftime, Coach Helton will reference this drive right here. Second and three. Pigram loses the football. DQ Thomas knocked it away from Pigram. And DQ Thomas is the playmaker. Comes up with a great sack force fumble right here. And Coach Schaefer dials up pressure. And look what happens when you send pressure. And now they're saying Western Kentucky recovered it. It looked like Cody Smith was on it for Middle Tennessee, but Gage Walker able to wrestle it away timeout. from him. Western Kentucky, their second full timeout. And with a minute 30 left, Western Kentucky will use their second timeout, just one remaining. And Tyrell Pigram, very sloppy with the ball handling. Yes, coming into the game, like a, he has not thrown an interception. One of six quarterbacks in the nation that has at least four touchdown passes and zero interceptions. So he's taking care of the ball in the air, but he's not. That was very careless of him. When you see a defender coming in, um, you are taught, you are coached as a QB to tuck the ball away, protect the ball. You can't just have it waving out like a loaf of bread because you could get sacked and fumble the ball. So at worst, that play should have just ended up in a pure sack. No forced fumble on that one. 
But fortunate for them, they were able to recover. And I want to know how Gage Walker ripped that ball away from Cody Smith. We saw another Blue Raider come into the pile along with Walker and Smith. And I wonder if that was able to jar the ball loose and Walker was able to rip it away I, from Smith. I would just say this. There's a lot of dirty things going on under that pile. <laughs> so you never know how they got it. I don't think I'm tough enough to be on the bottom of a dog pile. <laughs> So call it third and five on the Middle Tennessee 41. There's a look at head coach Tyson Helton. 1.30 to go here in the half. Pigram to throw, looking across the middle again. And Tinsley with another catch as Kenneth Major in on the stop, the backup defensive back. And another first down, the third first down for Western on the drive. By far, this is the best drive for WKU of the game. Six plays, 41 yards so far. Pigram steps up in the pocket, taking a shot downfield, across the middle. Looking for Dayton Wade in the end zone. And Couldn't find it. And it looks like Dayton Wade got behind the DBs, the safety in the corner. And one thing, playing DB, you must be deeper than the deepest. That is your responsibility. So there must have been a busted coverage right there. But fortunate for the Blue Raiders, it came up incomplete. Second and 10, 115 to go, one timeout for Western. Pigram in the pocket, near sideline, and he's got Dayton Wade again as DeCorian Patterson in on the stop, short of the first down. So that seems like that sets up third and, yep, third and one. That was a deep out. These offensive coordinators are calling deep outs from the far hash, which is, which is a dangerous throw. Clock continues to tick. Hand off up the middle, it's Walker, or excuse me, Jones. Wrestled down with one hand by Rakavian Poydras. But good enough for a first down and the clock will stop. And I know one thing Poydras does after practice, he must do rice grips because that was a strong <laughs> tackle right there. Those rice grips do work. First and 10 for Western, here comes the blitz, picked up. Pigram going for the end zone, looking for Tinsley, but Major was there on the coverage. Great coverage by Kenneth Major. It looked like he was in man coverage. He made a man turn, ran, got even with the receiver, and was able to fade back into him and prevent the receiver from catching the ball. Sets up a second and 10. And right now, they're fighting, fighting the clock as well. So they want to position themselves. They only got one timeout. So this has to be a, a very positive play right here. C.J. Jones in the backfield with Pigram on second and 10, 37 seconds left. Pigram in the pocket. Comeback route too high for Therese Trainer. Yes, I thought, I thought Therese almost came down with that one. That was a great vertical leap, but fortunately he was able to come up with the catch, sets up a third and 10. And, and I don't know if Coach Schaefer going to dial up a blitz right here or kind of just sit back, play coverage, and force the field goal. You brought it up so far, the best drive for Western Kentucky. 11 plays, 56 yards so far. Third and 10. Pigra in the pocket. He's going to tuck it, going to keep it. Inside the 10, takes a hit at about the six-yard line. That's good enough for a first down. DQ Thomas on the stop. And this is what modern day football is turning into. If you don't have a quarterback that can throw or run when the play breaks down, then you Time might out. find yourself in trouble. Western Kentucky. And Western, Western will burn their final timeout time with 25 yeah. seconds left. I mean, you see it all through the NFL, just quarterbacks that are mobile. They don't have to be, you know, speedsters, but they're able to get out of the pocket, get a first down, Russell Wilson. Great at it, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. This is what modern day offense, offenses are turning into. So now you got first and six with 25 seconds left. Uh, and they're in an opportune position to get some points out of this. Called a run of 13 yards for Pigram, his longest on the day. And a touchdown here would be huge for Western Kentucky going into halftime. 
Now, if, I, if I'm a D coordinator right now, I'm definitely thinking that if they do throw it, they're probably aiming towards the sidelines because they don't have any timeout. So to run something in the middle of the field, time is going to run. They may not have enough time to set up for a field goal. So I'm definitely, as a DB, I'm thinking out route, out route. First and goal from the six-yard line. Middle Tennessee has all three of their timeouts left. Bigram in the shotgun. Walker in the backfield. Rolling out Pigram and wide open in the end zone. Touchdown by WKU. And that's Caveras Thomas. No, excuse me, Xavier Lane. Xavier Lane came into the game with only one reception and has made multiple receptions all game and came up with the biggest play for WKU thus far. Another touchdown pass for Pilgrim. That's five on the year. I thought that said number eight on Lane's jersey, tucked in underneath his shoulder pads. Definitely number nine. As Narvison ties up this ball game with 21 seconds left. And this is what I was just talking about on this drive, that, that though MTSU was up by a touchdown, you still you can't relax because this drive turns into a confidence builder. So when WKU goes in, into halftime, Coach Helton would tell them, you see what we can do on MTSU. You watch that last drive. Now let's go do it again. Now doubt can creep in the minds of MTSU's defense. Like, hey, can we stop them? Like, yes, you can stop them if you are sending the blitz. But as we keep dropping in zone and allowing them to get big gains, it's going to create problems for MTSU. Easily yeah. the best drive on the Evening for the Hilltoppers, 13 plays, 75 yards, 2 minutes, 38 seconds. Tyrell Pigram finding a wide open, open Xavier Lane for his first career touchdown. Yes, Xavier Lane is having a, a great day. Like I say, came into the game with one reception and has recorded multiple receptions and the biggest catch of the game thus far, the touchdown from Pigram. Now five catches for 56 yards. Here in the first half for Lane, as that kick will roll out of the back of the end zone, and Middle Tennessee will take over on the 25-yard line with 21 seconds to go. Got to think Asher O'Hara is just going to run the clock out, and we will head to halftime. Yes, I think that's, that's, that's the best choice right now. WKU has momentum, um, so you don't want to put call a play that, that could put the ball in the air or, or risk a fumble uh, snap, a fumble run, and WK, you could get an easy field goal going into half. O'Hare's going to throw it. That ball is bobbled by McDonald and an incomplete pass, and that's a dangerous play with just 21 seconds to go. Yes, yeah, very dangerous because if you're going to call a pass play, you want to throw it past the line of scrimmage because with that, now you have, uh, there's a risk of a backwards pass. Now it's a fumble, um, you know, a tip ball interception. I think right now, MTSU must play it safe and just go into the half with a tight game. Second and 10, O'Hara, read play, going to keep it himself, going to stay inbounds. And that will do it for the first half as the clock will wind down. And we will go to halftime with both teams locked up with 10 points. Western Kentucky finding an answer on their last drive, tying this game up. And we will be back from Murfreesboro after this. Welcome back to halftime at Floyd Stadium, Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky all tied up at 10 o'clock. And Jeremy, it is homecoming here at Middle Tennessee this week as they host Western Kentucky in the 107th iteration of 100 Miles of Hate. But it's 2020, there's a global pandemic going on, so we can't do homecoming the way we normally would. So all the athletic teams and clubs got together and did a little different kind of homecoming with shoe boxes. I am no arts and crafts guy, but that is, uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, very impressive, very impressive. I like the creativity. 
of the floats and adding the pictures. Uh, I wonder how long it took to create some of those. All right, let's take a look at the Band of Blues getting in on the homecoming action. Jeremy, this pandemic has affected college football in so many different ways. Some teams aren't playing this year. Some conferences have yet to start playing. Big Ten, Pac-12, about a month away. Here's a look at what's been going on in Conference USA. Of course, in the middle of March, World Health Organization classifies COVID-19 as a pandemic. Just two days later, Conference USA cancels spring athletics altogether. Old Dominion canceled their season on August 10th. And a few days later, Conference USA Board of Directors decided, hey, we're going to still try and get this done. And here we are in week four. And only four teams have had positive tests in the last month. So things have been crazy, but we're finding our way through it. More from halftime coming up after this. Welcome back to Floyd Stadium alongside Jeremy Kellum. I am Jake Rose broadcasting from the Bragg Media and Entertainment Building across campus. And let's take a look at our first half highlights. Jeremy, that first quarter between Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky got a little ugly. Yes, it definitely got a little ugly. Uh, both offenses were falling behind the stakes, getting them second and long, third and longs. And then when they had to punt in the first quarter, both punters uh, pretty much shanked the ball. So a uh, very sloppy uh, first quarter, but I think the second quarter, they got it going. Yeah, Middle Tennessee also had a field goal attempt blocked. Western Kentucky couldn't do anything on the ensuing drive. Here's a look at that. And in the second quarter, all 20 points, 10 from each team were put up on the board. Both teams, both offenses, kind of rounding out into form. Asher O'Hare looked good, and Western Kentucky on that last drive putting together a lot of a lot of good plays. Definitely. If you're watching these two teams play for the first time, they are ident identical. You both have a mobile quarterback. Uh, both offensive coordinators are trying to run the ball on first down to get in front of the stick, get in a manageable second and third downs, and uh, the quarterbacks are making plays on with their legs and in the air. Asher O'Hare, 12 of 18, 125 yards through the air. Tyrell Pigram, 11 of 17, 108 yards through the air with one touchdown. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about you, Jeremy Kellum. Stay with us on ESPN3. Welcome back to Murfreesboro, all locked up. At 10 apiece between Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee, Conference USA's longest running rivalry. And Jeremy Kellum, you have played in this game a handful of times, former defensive back for the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. Here's some highlights. Clemson, you get to play at Clemson, man? Yeah, man, I cried in the beginning of the game. The energy from the fans and the crowd was big, man. It was very emotional. But you've played in this game, the 100 Miles of Hate game, four times. Any good memories? What's your best memory from this ball game? I would say my best memory, I believe it's from my senior year. Um, I, I remember causing a fumble and we got to uh, bring out the gray pants. The gray, um, they were special. That's when, you know, Coach Stott brought out the gray pants. So a great memory of playing against uh, WKU. Yeah, I played a couple bowl games at your tenure in Middle Tennessee as well. 2009 New Orleans Bowl champions. So got a lot of good memories here, I bet. Now nah, definitely, man. Anytime you could be a part of history and, and being blessed to be a part of that 10-3 uh, season, best uh, record in school history uh, is amazing. Uh, I talk to some of my friends all the time. We just laugh about the great memories that year. That's right. I just remember when this studio was way over there, and it was totally different than what it is right now. Anyway, let's take a look at our key players from the first half, Tyrell Pigram and Asher O'Hara, getting the job done for both of their offenses, especially in that second quarter. We talked about Asher O'Hara, how efficient he has been throwing the football, but Tyrell Pigram getting it done on that last drive for Western Kentucky. Definitely, uh, just like we talked about in the opener, um, you see that both teams are led by the quarterbacks. How, they, how well or how you know, bad their quarterbacks play will determine the outcome of the game. And so right now they're even. I mean, that's why you got a 10-10 game. 
All knotted up at 10 here in Murfreesboro, 107th edition of 100 Miles in Hate. Second half action coming up next on ESPN3. Stay with us. Welcome back to Floyd Stadium as we are just moments away from second half kickoff here in Murfreesboro, Middle Tennessee, Western Kentucky, each team looking for their first win on the season. Western Kentucky coming off the bye week after dropping a week one loss to Louisville, followed up by a home loss to Liberty two weeks ago. There's a look at Tyson Helton on the left side of your screen in his second season at the Hill. Won nine games a year ago, the reigning Conference USA Coach of the Year. Those nine wins actually tripled their 2018 total and matched the previous two years combined. And on the right, the old statesman of Conference USA, Rick Stockstill in his 15th season and the 2018 Conference USA Coach of the Year. Coach Stockstill, 23-5 and all-time at home against Conference USA teams, looking to pick up win number 24 here today against the Toppers. And Jeremy, you know better than anybody just how intense this rivalry can be. Doesn't always get the national headlines in terms of rivalry, but certainly here in this part of the world, it's a very big rivalry between these two schools. Uh, definitely, uh, it's a state border rivalry. Um, so if you grew up in Ten Middle Tennessee or uh, Kentucky, uh, Bowling Green area, you know how important this rivalry is. And it looks like we're gonna go down to the wire. 10-10 may lead to overtime. We'll see what happens this second half. Western Kentucky will take the opening kick of the second half after deferring in the first as Bradshaw is deep. You see, that is why it's, it was so important for MTSU to apply pressure at the end of the half because now WKU went in with momentum, got a touchdown, and I get the ball back to try to continue that momentum. Cruz Holt to kick off. And Western Kentucky will take over at their own 25-yard line. So we'll see how Tyrell Pigram picks up in the second half. He ended up, he ended the first half with a touchdown pass. We'll see if he can continue this as we start the third quarter. Pigram, the grad transfer out of Maryland, entered the transfer portal in February, got to Bowling Green in May. Had seven starts in 34 games at Maryland. Started games in four different years. First Maryland quarterback to do so. He's found a home here at the Hill. First play of the second half is going to be to C.J. Jones. And that was a great pickup on first down. Six yards on first down. Now you're here second and medium, second and short, looking to convert. So second and four, C.J. Jones getting a lot of run in that first half. That was his fourth attempt for 25 yards, averaging more than six yards a carry here today. Jones again around the left side, gets around one man, but good open field tackle by Quincy Riley, the cornerback. Great job by Quincy Riley, keeping leverage. He had outside leverage, kept his outside shoulder free, and was able to make a form tackle. He has been awesome all game long. I'm very impressed by Quincy Riley. Riley, redshirt freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. Was the South Carolina High School Track Athlete of the Year in 2019. Ran the 100 meters in 10.4 seconds. Wow, he's, he, he's blazing. Yeah, state champion in the 100 meter and 200 meter. Third and three. Bigram checks down, and it's going to be good enough for a first down as Joshua Simon has another catch. And so now you see the rhythm that's being continued from the end of the first half. Tyrell Pigram has confidence. They just came out, got a first down. Now they're moving the sticks. And I just, I, I think Coach Schaefer really should have applied pressure at the end of that first half. Malik Staples now in the backfield for 
the toppers on first and 10. Play action, Pigram down the far sideline looking for Tinsley. And Corian Patterson been calling his name quite a bit today in on the coverage. I think Pilgrim was expecting the back shoulder um, because they, they teach receivers if the DB is even, quarterback is going to throw a back shoulder. If the, D, if the receiver is ahead of the DB, then they're going to go ahead and throw the deep ball. And right there, it looks like Patterson was even. So Pilgrim was expecting the back shoulder, but the receiver went on the same page. And correct me if I'm wrong, but we've been seeing a lot of back shoulder routes or throws, I should say, in college football the last few years. No, definitely. You see it in the NFL. Aaron Rodgers is great at it. Jones in the backfield, Pigram to throw, quick throw near side. Xavier Lane makes a few men miss and finally dragged down by a host of Blue Raiders. Xavier Lane had that touchdown catch in the first half. And, and you know, speaking of back shoulder throws, it's one of the hardest throws to stop as a DB. And it's very effective if you're a quarterback and a receiver. Six catch for Lane, who came into this game with just two catches on the season. Both those catches came two weeks ago against Liberty, just for five yards. Third and five, Pigram. Short throw knocked away by Quincy Riley. And his impressive day continues. Fourth down for the toppers. I might just call him the man. He is the man right now for MTSU's defense. He's the man in the run game. He's the man in the pass game. He's making plays. I know my former teammate, Kenneth Gilstrap, the DB coach, is very happy with him. He has to be. Great job. Great timing from Riley to jump the route. And John Haggerty is out to punt for the third time today. And it looks like MTSU is in punt safe right now. Maybe expecting the fate. Haggerty boots it, high kick. Deep inside Middle Tennessee territory as Reed Blankenship called for a fair catch at about the 10 yard line and we will take a break. All tied up at 10 here in the third. Stay with us on ESPN3. First and 10 for Middle Tennessee at their own 10 yard line. After the Haggerty punt, O'Hara will keep it on first down and not a lot of room. D'Angelo Malone was there, Ricky Barber was there. And once, once again, Coach Franklin just trying to establish the run, get a positive gain on first down to try to set up a manageable second down, but only one yard on that play. Jeremy Darvin out of Nashville was in on the stop as well. O'Hara looking across the middle for Ali. Finds him right at the 20 yard line. Bailey on the tackle along with Devin Key. And that's good enough for a Blue Raider first down. Their 10th first down on the night. That was a great throw, great catch. Second catch on the night for Ali. Mobley around the left side trying to find a seam and spins right into Kyle Bailey after a couple. And that first down was very important for MTSU. Um, you want to come out and establish some momentum, but you want to get out of your own shadows of your own end zone. So that was very good getting that first down, now they in a medium second down. Mobley had a career night against San Antonio. As here comes the blitz. Jaron Pierce able to get his hands on it and thrown down by Devin Key as the blitz was coming and O'Hara had to get rid of it. Devin Key is all over the field for WKU. He's making pass breakups, almost caught an interception, coming up here on the screen, making a great form tackle. He is all over the field, having a great game thus far. As I was saying about Mobley, three touchdowns last week against Texas San Antonio, two rushing, one receiving. Had a touchdown catch wiped away earlier in this one. Third and five, O'Hara. Here comes Malone, can't get him. O'Hara's gonna tuck it and get the first down as he slides just past the 30. And, and like I mentioned earlier, this is what the game of football is going to. You must have a mobile quarterback. When things break down on third and five, you have a quarterback that can run and Astro O'Hara that can get the first down. Great job by him. MTSU moves the chains once again. 
First and 10, toss right side. It's Jay McDonald, and he's going to be ridden out of bounds after a nice pickup. That was a great pickup by Jay McDonald. He came into the game with, with 100 yards rushing. So that was a great pickup. The first down run on first down. McDonald, the senior out of Oakland, California. Spent two years at Laney College in California before finding a home here in Middle Tennessee as McDonald will keep it again. Nope. That's Asher O'Hara. Fooled everybody on that one. Yeah, you know you ran a good play fake zone read if you fooled a cameraman. Kincaid in on the stop. Just from the reaction of the fans and maybe, you know, extracurricular activities after the play that they wanted a flag for. Has been a little chippiness going on in this ball game after, after the whistle. Definitely expected in a rivalry game. So many kids probably played against each other in high school. Yeah, a recruited lot of, by yeah. both schools. Yeah, a lot of kids out of Tennessee and Kentucky in this game. Georgia as well. Second and eight, O'Hara in the pocket. Now going to tuck it. And he'll be knocked down at about the 46-yard line. And the only thing, you know, when, you, when your quarterback is running around all the time, they can get fatigued. And on that particular play, Asher Harris looked very fatigued as he scrambled around. And now he has to come up with a big play on third down and keep the chains moving. Third and three. Pierce in motion. Short pass to Pierce. Knocked away by Kincaid. Kincaid and that Western Kentucky sideline trying to get a call their way with a fumble, but Kincaid, great stop on Pierce as we get another look at it. And I think he might have stripped it away as they went down to the ground. We'll see right here. Yep. And I think they, they have an interception on the play. The rolling on the field is the offense possessed the ball and down, fourth down. Very fortunate call for MTSU. And I, and I think just sitting at, up here as a former DB, I'm, I'm really questioning, I'm really questioning the deep out routes from the opposite hash. That is a dangerous throw. That's pick six waiting to happen. And on that particular play, it almost was an interception. Timeout on the field as Kyle Ulbrich was out to punt for Middle Tennessee, and it looks like Western is taking their first timeout, and we're going to take a break. 8.06 to go here in the third. Timeout, Middle Tennessee and Western, Western Kentucky. are tied. They're first. Fourth and one, and Middle's offense is on the field. Mobley in the backfield. O'Hara now checking with the sideline. Pooch kick. And running the other way. And a beautiful, beautiful kick from Asher O'Hara. I wasn't ready for that. Western certainly wasn't ready for that. Shatan Mobley downs it at the one yard line for Western Kentucky. Great, great play call by Coach Stock uh, and the special teams coordinator because what you do when you, you line up in your offense and do a pooch kick, you take their punt returner from back there. So now they have to line up in your traditional defense. So when the ball it begins to roll, you don't have anybody that can stop it. And so now you can down the ball at the one yard line, half yard line. So great play call. That's a game of chess right there. Great move by Coach Stock. Let's look at DQ Thomas, the senior, having himself a ball game. Had seven tackles in the first half. That's a great number he has on, too, man. Look familiar? Yeah, look familiar. Very familiar. So Western with their back against the wall. Pigram to throw in his end zone. Looking across the middle. And wide open was Wade. And putting the lick on Wade was Reed Blankenship. First time we've called his name tonight. Very gutsy call by Coach Helton and, and WKU because normally when you're backed up and you're standing in your own end zone, you want to you know, get a quick run to get out to give your quarterback some room to operate, but it was in a shotgun deep in their own end zone. 
but they completed the ball. Pigram showing some composure that deep in his own end zone. First and 10. Pigram going to keep it, slips out of one tackle, and gets it out to the 24-yard line. And so far early here in the, well, halfway through the third quarter, no Gage Walker on the field for Western Kentucky's offense. It's all been Malik Staples or C.J. Jones in the backfield for the toppers. And that's interesting because listening to Coach Helton at the beginning of the week, he was talking about getting Gage Walker going. Um, last year at this time he had almost 300 yards rushing. Um, so It's Jones in the backfield again. He gets across the 30 to about the 31-yard line. Jordan Ferguson on a stop. But it appears they're going with the hot man. And it picks up the first down. Jones stays in the backfield. Pigram to throw again, looking near sideline. Try to go back shoulder to Lane, but Patterson there, step for step with Lane. Throw might have been over his head a little bit. And DBs, if you're watching at home, this is how you play the back shoulder throw. Once you get in coverage, you get in phase with the receiver, look back for the ball, you get the benefit of the doubt all the time from the referee. Great play by Patterson. Second down and 10, Jones still in the backfield. Transfer from Texas A&M and Blinn College. Pigram again near sideline, Lane with another catch. Running backwards a little bit, takes a lick. From Patterson. And that was a great like, comeback route, deep comeback route by Xavier Lane, who was having a great game. Devin Curtis in on the stop as well. Freshman out of Nashville, Tennessee. First down and 10. Prigham on a designed run. Pick up a handful. Brought down by several Blue Raiders. Though, we, though that was only a short game, but a great job by Pigram rep recognizing the pressure coming off the right edge. He, he was able to do a quarterback draw and, and go ahead and get four-yard gain. Now he's in a second and medium. Let's look at Brett Shepard, senior from Buford, Georgia. Came into this game with 15 tackles. Jones again will keep it and nowhere to go as Devin Curtis again in on a stop. Reed Blankenship helping out as well. And it's going to be third and six. I think this is, a, this is a pivotal play for MTSU's defense right here because WKU is, is, is gaining momentum where they, they, have, they have kept the momentum since the first half. I think MTSU has to come up with a stop right here, get the ball back to their offense. Call it third down and four at about the 49-yard line of Western Kentucky. Three wide to the near side for the toppers. Pigram looks that way, near side, and Wade has another catch and good enough for another toppers first down. That was the eighth play of this drive. Definitely, it looked like they ran a little out and up combination with the slot receiver. And the outside receiver, the outside receiver, was able to keep the eyes of Riley and, and allowed the out route to come open. So eight plays, four first downs on this drive for the toppers as they are in Middle Tennessee territory. Pigram will keep it up the middle, has room, makes one man miss. That ball is stripped out again by Blankenship. Was he down? Now that's a great play by Reed Blankenship. The senior safety. He's on the Thorpe Award watch list preseason. Rolling on the field as the ball was a fumble and covered out of defense. So Middle Tennessee has the ball. Now surely we will take a look at this fumble. The previous play is under review. Yeah, the official that came in on the spot did not make a signal. Looks like Pigram's backside might have been down. He, 
He certainly thinks it is, and we will have an answer for you on the other side of the break. Welcome back to Murfreesboro. A beautiful shot of the October sunset. Coming from behind the hills here in the mid-state, a perfect fall day for football here in Murfreesboro. Still reviewing what was called on the field a fumble by Tyrell Pigram. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they're going to have enough to overturn it because it looks like his backside landed on Reed Blankenship. And from this angle, uh, After review, the runner was down at the 28-yard oh. line. Please reset the game clock to 4.05, 4.05. So there you have it. It'll be another first down, I believe, for Western Kentucky as they are marching right along on this drive. We get another look at the run by Pigram. And that would have been the third fumble on the day for Western Kentucky had that call stood. And the second by Pigram, the first was recovered back in the first half. So first and 10 from the 28-yard line for Western Kentucky. Currently on a nine-play, 71-yard drive. Jones in the backfield. Screen pass near side, almost got blown up. Was looking for Dayton Wade. And right there, that, that looks like a RPO. As you notice, Pilgrim was eyeing the corner on the left side as he put the ball in the stomach of the running back in. And apparently he read that he had that now route open, but great play by Patterson to come up and be ready to make a play on the throw. Second down and 10. Bigger him to throw. Looking for the end zone just short. Was either looking for Simon is tight end or deeper in the end zone. I thought Greg Gray almost had an interception right there. He got away with a little snug, which is, which is a great play as a DB. Because if you can get away with a little pull right here, right there, the referee can't see it, and he almost had a chance to get a second pick on the year. Might have been gunning for Dayton Wade in the back of the end zone. Probably a miscommunication on the routes. Third down, handoff Jones left side. And will be pushed out of bounds short of the first down. And there is a flag on the field. And I think we might have a holding on WKU's wide receiver on Riley. Official made the call that, or the motion for holding, but did not indicate on who. Holding offense number nine. 10-yard yeah, penalty from yeah. this spot of the foul. Remains third down. Yes, and, and see, even though Quincy Riley doesn't make the play, he does make the play because he's fighting to keep outside leverage. And because he's fighting to keep leverage, the wide receiver has to hold him. And now you have a third and long instead of a, you know, first down. He saw Rick Stock still there telling his safeties, look out for that deep ball. See if Tyson Helton wants to take a shot here on third and 17. Western Kentucky on the 35 yard line. Pigram steps up, ball batted at the line and incomplete. Great job by the D line. They are coached. If you can't get to the quarterback, put your hands up. Great job, great job, fourth and long. It looks like WKU's offense may stay on the field. Kind of a no man's land between field goal and punt. And the way Western's defense has played, looks like the punt team is going to come out and John Haggerty is going to take another swing at it. Try and pin middle deep. I guess when, you, when your punter's on the great guy watch list, you got to go ahead and send him out and let him become a weapon. Actually, it's going to be a field goal attempt. Field goal, OK. And Narvison nails it. 
And it's dangerous. It's dangerous, you know, to kick when you have deep kicks like that. But he nailed it because the ball is going to come off a low trajectory. Um, but he was able to knock it through. 53-yard field goal by Braden Narvison. Right on the money. And Western Kentucky out front, 13 to 10. When you have a kicker that can knock down a 53-yard field goal, your offense is really limited. So once you cross the 50 to 40-yard line, you're in scoring position. And right now, I think we're going to come down to the wire, so those three points are going to be crucial. So 3.26 to go here in the third quarter. Western Kentucky on top. Scoring drive, 14 plays, 64 yards. Knocked off four and a half minutes on the clock. And Braden Narvison knocked through, 53-yard field goal. Hit a 52-yard game winner in the first responders bowl last year. There's a look at Asher O'Hara. And right now, if we just reflect back to that last drive before the first half ended, the momentum has carried on for WKU. Short kick will be returned from the five-yard line. Trying to get to the outside. DJ England Chisholm, flag flies. I believe we got a holding on the play. Back around the 15-yard line. This is a huge drive for MTSU. During the return, holding by the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. Get another look at it. And once referees see that jersey come away from a man's body, they're going to call it. They're going to throw it every time. That's why they teach the blockers or whoever's blocking, get in between their pads, grab on, but don't let them disengage. So Middle Tennessee starting this drive with 3.18 to go in the third at their own 12-yard line, trailing by three. O'Hare to throw, far sideline, short, but caught by C.J. Windham. And once again, we have the deep out route from the opposite hash. I think they are playing with flyer when they throw that ball, but that time they completed it, second and four. So great pickup by NTSU's offense. We've seen O'Hare throw short several times on those throws to the far sideline. Here's second and four. He's going to keep it and get popped at the line of scrimmage. D'Angelo Malone laid the hit, but Eli Brown was first to get there. This is a big third down from MTSU's offense. Right now, WKU has all the momentum right now. MTSU needs to convert on this one to keep the momentum on their, on their side and to give the defense a break. 11 and a half sacks a year ago for Malone. Gave him the Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year Award, the first Western Kentucky player to win it. O'Hara jump throw, finds Yusuf Ali, breaks the tackle, he's at the 30, has a little bit of room on the far sideline, finally brought down just shy of midfield. And that was a great play by Asher O'Hara and Yusuf Ali connecting on that crosser route. Big play, MTSU definitely needed this. A little jump pass by Asher O'Hara. Play action, O'Hara going to keep it on the option. And he'll get across midfield and, and pick up a few. And this is what Coach Franklin wants to do, run the ball, design QB runs on first down. Now you're second and five. Now your whole playbook is open. So look for him to convert on this down right here. Asher O'Hara, 19 running attempts. The next nearest back in terms of carries, Shatan Mobley, four. And I think, you know, they're, they're being very effective with the QB design runs. Here's Mobley on the left side and nowhere to go. Looks like Deontay Ruffin came in. I think, you know, sometimes when your quarterback runs that much, you know, they're, they're taking a lot of hits. And those hits can then affect them in passing. But right now, Asher Harris is being very effective. Just reminds me of my quarterback, Dwight Dasher, who was amazing and electric 
running the Tony Franklin system. All-time leading rusher for a quarterback in Middle Tennessee history was Dasher. O'Hara on the rollout and overthrows Ali. Yes, Dwight Dasher, that, that bowl game, that New Orleans bowl game, I think he threw for 200 and ran for 100. Um, I think like the second player to do that since Ben B.Y., Vince Young at that time, back in 2009. So he had a great game at New Orleans bowl game. So fourth and five for Middle Tennessee will bring out Kyle Ulbricht for another punt. And I think even though they didn't convert right there, as an offense, you still have some confidence. You got a big play, got, a, uh, got your defense some rest. So now the defense has to come out, get a stop, to get the ball back to WKU. Yeah, now this game is turning into a chess match of field position. As we are 37 seconds away from the fourth quarter as Ulbricht gets a nice punt off. And it'll bounce deep into Western territory. Wow, what an amazing special teams play. Officials will confirm. I don't know if he was able to save it. And it'll be a touchback. So almost, almost another great special teams play from Middle Tennessee. At first glance, I couldn't tell if Major had broken the plane or not. Definitely, I thought, I thought he had made a great play, but the refs got it right, had a better vantage point than I did. And Tyrell Pigram is certainly happy that he doesn't have to start with his back in his own end zone on another drive. And MTSU, we have, uh, MTSU has them backed up, but they must get off the field. They, they have to come up with a stop on this drive. You know, Western's offense has come alive here the last few drives as C.J. Jones will pick up a couple on first down. C.J. Jones, transfer from Blinn Community College after redshirting at Texas A&M. And if you notice, WKU is doing the same thing as MTSU. They're, they're trying to run the ball on first down. Um, they're just doing it a little different. That was a run by the running back um, when MTSU is trying to do design QB runs. But great stop, though, by MTSU. Sets up. And the first three frames are over in Murfreesboro. We go to the fourth quarter. Western Kentucky on top 13 to 10. 100 miles of hate, the best rivalry in Conference USA, living up to the hype in Murfreesboro. Fourth quarter coming up. Fifteen minutes left in 100 Miles of Hate. Western Kentucky on top of the host Blue Raiders 13 to 10. Alongside Jeremy Kellum, I'm Jake Rose, broadcasting across campus here at the Bragg Media and Entertainment Building on the campus of Middle Tennessee State. Thanks for joining us tonight on ESPN3. Second and eight. Wade on the catch, not a lot doing, coming back towards midfield. Ferguson with the final hit. That'll bring up third. Now seven. And I, and I believe that's the first time WKU has went to an empty set in their offense, and until you reacted very well. Sets up a third down, five. Sixth catch on the night for Dayton Wade. Came into this game with no catches, but of course, Core Pearson had left the Hilltoppers after their last loss, as that throw is short to Wade. Did he pick it up off the turf? I guess so. And there you go, another out route from the opposite hash. Completed. But he might have caught it off his shoe or ground maybe. Called first down and 10 for the toppers. And I believe we're gonna Previous get another look at it. Complete catch is under review. I say, at first glance, I wasn't so sure. Hey, he might have got it. The ball can touch the ground as long as the receiver maintains control of most of the ball. Definitely, and I didn't see it move. Once it hit his hand, it did graze the ground, but I did not see it move. This is a pivotal call right here. Because you're going to either set up a fourth down or it'll be a first down for WKU. As 
There's another look at it. Wade certainly thinks that he got it. Officials hashing it out. So you and I were talking during the break. A lot of these, both of these teams recruit from a lot of the same areas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia, Alabama. Yep. But they also play so similar as yep. well in terms of pace of offense, styles of offense. After review, the ball hit the ground, therefore it's an incomplete pass. Please reset the game clock to 14-21. 14-21. All right, I'm 0 for 2 on my prognostication of reviews. Apparently that ball, enough of the ball hit the ground, so incomplete pass. And it'll be fourth down. And now John Haggerty comes out to punt. Standing at his own 10-yard line. Let's see if middle brings any heat. Short line drive kick from Haggerty, but a fair catch called for by Reed Blankenship and Middle Tennessee. And that was a great job by Reed Blankenship, ensuring that he caught the ball, um, which prevented, which would prevent the ball from taking extra bounces and gives MTSU's offense great position. Yeah, Middle Tennessee starting off. Pretty good field position, their own 32-yard line. For their first drive of the fourth quarter. Good stand by the Middle Tennessee defense. Quick pass near side. Pierce at about the 30. Pushed out of bounds just shy of the 40. And so, no, you didn't see a design QB run on the first down, but you're seeing a quick pass, which serves like a run. So now you get four yards on first down, gets you in a manageable second down. Middle has punted on their last two drives. O'Hare second and six. Losing time. Pocket collapsing on him. And all of the toppers bring him down. And right there, the offensive line didn't hold up for O'Hare. And as a result, WKU D-line was able to converge and get the sack. Puts MTSU offense in a third and long. So second and man manageable at second and six now turns into third and long where Middle Tennessee has struggled all year long. O'Hara steps up, now steps out, rolling. Thinking about tucking it, chucks it. Far sideline and caught, beautiful catch by Jimmy Marshall. Cutting back to midfield, well into topper territory. Inside the 30-yard line. Now I believe I believe he was forced out of bounds by the DB. There is a flag down, and we will get another look at it. And it doesn't look like he was forced out of bounds, so that should be a legal touching against Jimmy Marshall. Looked like he had his heels on the white. And at that particular point as a receiver, you definitely have to be more aware of where you are on the field. And this could have been a big play for MTSU's offense. And and like good you, look there. Good job by our camera crew to catch that on the last couple of shots. And it looks like Middle Tennessee is marching the other way. And this is why you don't want to get behind the sticks. And this is why Coach Franklin likes to have the design runs and get in second medium, third and medium, because you don't have a play call to get up a, a third and maybe 20. Officials figuring it out. Tonight's crew refereed by Rodney Illegal Burnett. Illegal touching. Offense number six. The receiver went out of bounds and returned on his own and was first to touch the ball. The down counts at the previous spot. Fourth down. So Kyle Ulbrich will come back out for another punt and do his best to Pin the toppers deep in their own zone with 12.56 here in the fourth quarter. 
And, and both defenses are playing well tonight, WKU defense and MTSU defense. So someone on either side, on either team, will have to come up with a big play to win this game. Yeah, for as poorly as both defenses have played this season here in the early portion of 2020, neither offense has more than 260 yards of total offense. Yeah. Pressure coming for Ulbrick. Fair catch will be called for at about the 32-yard line. And we will take a break here in the fourth quarter. Stay with us. Western on top 13 to 10. Twelve forty-three to go here in the fourth quarter at Floyd Stadium. Western Kentucky has the ball first and ten on their own 32-yard line. After another defensive stop by that Hilltopper defense. And Tyrell Pigram will take over. And off right side. Great game right there by WKU. First and 10, first down run on first down. Keep the chains moving. And now what WKU wants to do is just tick the, the clock as well. The, the time is on their side. They're winning. And that's Jakari Moses. Redshirt Jr. from Palm Beach, Florida. His first carry tonight. They give it right back to him, breaks one tackle, able to hang on to the football. Brought down by DQ Thomas. Greg great in on the stop as well. And I, and I like the mentality of Greg Great right here. He, he not only is in position to make the tackle, but he's also going for the strip. He realizes and understands that the defense must come up with a big play and get the ball back to the offense. Another first and 10 for Western Kentucky. Play action across the middle. Pigram finds a man and he dropped it. Joshua Simon, All-Conference USA first team selection. Had it in his paws, couldn't hang on. And, and one thing I like about Tyrell Pigram is, is, is he won't beat you. He won't beat himself. And, and all year long, he has not turned the ball over through the air. Um, and still, even in this game, has not thrown an interception. He's putting the ball where it needs to be. I know he wishes receiver could hold on to that one right there. Simon usually so short-handed. 30 catches, four touchdowns last year. Another far sideline throw from that near hash. Pigram put some mustard on that one as Wade was able to haul in another reception. His seventh, he's now tied with Xavier Lane for the team lead tonight. Definitely great throw. Once again, like you said, far hash, out route. Tyrell Pigram had the arm to get it there and to hit the receiver in stride so he can pick up some yards after the catch. Big third down play right here. Third and three. Pigram steps up in the pocket, has a receiver near side. That's Tinsley. Should have enough for a first down. So he's right on the line, actually. Yeah, go ahead and give him the first. Great conversion by Terrell Pigram and WKU's offense. They're moving the chains. The clock is running. They're ahead. Everything is going smooth right now for WKU. Moses still in the backfield for Western Kentucky. Has not played since last year's season opener, August 29th against Central Arkansas. Suffered an injury in that game. Missed the rest of the season. He's got another carry around the left side, able to break a couple of tackles. And a nice run by Jakari Moses. Welcome back. And Jakari Moses was able to get to the edge of the defense. And anytime you run that zone read, the quarterback has the option to either give it to the running back or run the opposite way. And that time, give it to the run back. Great pickup. Moses scored on his first ever touch as a true freshman way back in 2017 against La Tech. 19 yard touchdown rush. Say that's a good way to start your career. Getting some serious carries here in the fourth quarter. 
against Western's arch rival. Play action. Pigram steps up, throws deep, looking towards the end zone, and overthrows Tinsley. Blankenship and Great, the safeties were right there with him. Great job, Arie Blankenship. He didn't bite on the play action pass. He was able to stay deep, and like I said before, the responsibility as that deep middle safety, you have to be deeper than the deepest, and he was on that play. Great job, Arie. Now second down and 10 as Western Kentucky. And you see the, the play calling, the confidence that, that is growing. That was a play action on first down. So they're going for the juggler here. Western Kentucky slowing down the pace offensively a little bit as Pigram will tuck it on the read, get popped at the line of scrimmage. And shaken up on the play is the guy that made the initial contact, Jonathan Butler, a junior at a Sumter, South Carolina. He'll jog off the field. And now it's third and nine for Western Kentucky, and this is a huge third down for this Middle Tennessee defense. Huge third down. And this may be two down territory for WKU, so MTSU might have to come up with two big stops. But they have to start with the first one. And off up the middle is Moses. He's dropped at about the 24-yard line. And I'm one, and on third and nine, it looks like they may have picked up the first down. That is so demoralizing for a defense on third and nine that you give up a run, not a pass, a run for first down. But may still, it's fourth, fourth and, and one. one. And Western Kentucky stays on the field as Malik Staples, 6'1", 225, is in the backfield. Pigram will take it himself, and he'll pick up the first down. And see, when your quarterback is a part of the run game, you have an extra guy. So it looks like they run quarterback lead, quarterback power right now. Now you get an extra blocker and a, and a quarterback that's unaccounted for by the defense, and you're able to get the first down. Great play call by WKU. Huge first down pickup for Western Kentucky. 17th first down on the night. As Western now is 130 yards rushing. And a new set of downs. Reed roll out near side. And that's Dalvin Smith, redshirt freshman from Glasgow, Kentucky, with his first catch tonight. And if I'm an MTSU defensive player right now, and my, my mentality is I have to get a turnover, I have to get a stop. At least I have to keep WKU to a field goal. That way, still a one-score possession game with seven minutes to go. Twelfth play of the drive for Western Kentucky. And they've done a really good job of stringing together drives here after the first quarter. This is their fourth drive of at least ten plays. Moses looking for room, finds a seam, tries to break it to the outside and tripped on his own feet around the 11-yard line. Does pick up the first down. Great job by Reed Blankenship, and I, I know he, he didn't fully bring him down, but just him being here was able to slow him down. Now you live to, get him, live to see another day. And as a defensive player, sometimes it's all, not all about making the tackle, but at least you get him down somehow, some way. Moses now five carries, 36 yards, averaging 7.2 yards per clip, all coming here in the fourth quarter. And Western with a fresh set of downs at about their own 11 and a half yard line. Using a lot of clock on this drive. Pigram roll out, gonna tuck it, lofting towards the end zone, wide open, touchdown, Joshua Simon. And once again, you, you see the mobility by Pilgrim coming into play. He was able to buy extra time by moving around in the pocket. He scrambled with purpose, not to run, but to find an open man. And touchdown, six touchdown of the year, still no interceptions. Great job by Tyrell Pilgrim. Same hometown as Ray Allen and Ja Morant. The pride of Dazelle, South Carolina, I'm sure.
Joshua Simon's first touchdown catch on the season. And a sophomore. And with the extra point after, Western Kentucky on top 20 to 10 with 6.04 to go in the fourth. Toppers leading the rivalry. Team plays 68 yards, 6 minutes, 39 seconds. Capped off with an 11-yard touchdown pass from Tyrell Pigram to Joshua Simon, his first touchdown catch on the season as Middle Tennessee will take over at their own 25-yard line. Down 10, 6.09 to go in the fourth quarter. 100 miles of hate, don't go anywhere. Six oh four to go in the fourth quarter. Middle Tennessee takes the field down by 10. And Jeremy, that last drive for Western Kentucky could have been a backbreaker. 13 plays over six and a half minutes of play time, and it resulted in seven points. O'Hare to throw on first down. Lots of time, and he's going to throw it away. Great coverage downfield by the toppers. And see, see what that drive did, not only are they up by 10, it places so much pressure on the play calling because not only are you playing against the score, but you're playing against the time. And so now you see when have, uh, has MTSU on first down go all verts. So now you're trying to make up yards, get points really fast. And that's not, not your style. Second down and 10. Four wide for Middle Tennessee. Here comes pressure. O'Hara another jump throw. Didn't get a lot on it. Ali with a catch, but just shy of the line to gain, so it should be third and short. Great pickup by Asher O'Hare um, on the completion to Yusuf Ali, who has played very well this game, came up with some great catches. This is a big third down right here. Third and two, Mobley in the backfield. Just five carries for the big fella today. Hand off Mobley, trying to break it to the outside. Nothing doing. And meeting him in the backfield. And normally when you see a play call like that on third and two, uh, this is two down territory. So um, try to get it the first down with the run now. Fourth and two, probably come back with a pass right here. Try to convert. Damon Lowe, Jr., the senior out of Louisville. First time we called his name tonight. Big play on Mobley, and now it's a must-have fourth and two for Middle Tennessee. Pearson motion. O'Hare to throw. Looking over the middle and overthrows. Jaron Pierce put a late flag along that Middle Tennessee sideline. I think they may get Pass to interference, eight. defense number 36. The ball will be placed and spotted a foul. Automatic first down. Antoine Kincaid, defensive back from Jacksonville, Florida. And we get another look. And, no, and, you're the defensive think, back. You tell the, me. The, now, the, the initial part of the play, him diving in to go put PBU, that's not the pass interference. It was the arm on the back shoulder that pulled it. So if he would have let go of the shoulder pass, I don't think it would have been a call on that one. So middle stays alive with a fresh set of downs after the P.I. call. O'Hara looking along that Western Kentucky sideline, trying to find Jimmy Marshall overthrew him. Pressure up the middle from Ricky Barber who blew right by Marcus Greer. And so now if I'm the D coordinator for Western Kentucky, I'm just pinning our ears back and letting them go. MTSU has to score and score twice so we know that they're going for a pass. And WKU is blitzing. Just the 13th play in the last three drives for Middle Tennessee. Comeback screen route. England Chisholm, his first catch tonight, stopped just short of the 40-yard line. 
Pick up of a few, third and seven, and another big third down for Middle Tennessee. And they're in four down territory the whole way. Yes, four down territory the whole way. They have to convert on this. And the clock is ticking. Not a lot of tempo coming here from the Middle Tennessee offense. O'Hara steps up, dodges a couple of tacklers, and will slide. Good enough for a first down. They're just short of a first down, it looks like. Oh, I thought he converted, but maybe a fourth and one. But like you said, MTSU has to hurry up. They have to get in their hurry-up offense. Fourth and one. O'Hara will keep it, and good enough for a first down. So that'll stop the clock for a hot second. 3.20 to go here in the fourth. Middle needing a couple of scores. And if I'm MTSU, I have to stretch the field. I have to get the ball to my playmaker, Jaron Pierce, who's having a good game, but he has to get in pay dirt like we talked about in the opener. O'Hara looking left, throws left, near sideline, caught. Both feet in for C.J. Wyndham. Great, great, great play because not only did you get a first down, but he got out of bounds, which saved them a timeout. So great completion to Wyndham. Tony Toe Tap right there. Second catch on the night for C.J. Wyndham, the senior out of Powder Springs. Looked like O'Hara was trying to set up a screen pass. Now going to dive for what yardage he can. Now what MTSU may have to do is try to get a, another first down or try to get 20 more yards and then attempt a field goal to then try timeout. to do an onside kick. Middle Tennessee, their first. Middle will use their first timeout with 2.39 to go. And we're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. Middle trying to climb back into it. Toppers on top by 10. Welcome back after the Middle Tennessee timeout. They have two remaining, 2.39 to go, second and nine. O'Hara rolls near side, looking along that near sideline, just throwing it away. And it'll be third down. Third down and nine. Definitely two down territory. Like I mentioned, MTSU has to get a first down, has to get in position, maybe to attempt a quick field goal and then go for an onside kick to try to go get a touchdown. Middle Tennessee just in the red zone one time today. Three times combined for both of these teams. Just trying to get some points on the board. Third and nine, O'Hare gonna keep it, got Rune up the middle. He's at the 20, stiff armed. And brought down inside the 15, about the 12-yard line. Huge run from Asher O'Hara. Yes, huge run. And if you look at the personnel, it was in 10 personnel, one back, everybody split out, and it was able to take WKU's linebackers and open it up for a QB draw. And now they're in prime position to get a touchdown. Middle moving quickly. O'Hara taking a shot towards the end zone. Flags fly. Was looking for Jimmy Marshall. Looked like Deontay Ruffin was in on the coverage. Pass interference, defense number 26. The penalty occurred in the end zone, the ball we placed at the two yard line, automatic first down. Deontay Ruffin, the senior out of Kenner, Louisiana, got a whole handful of Jimmy Marshall's jersey. Yes, anytime your, your head is not facing the ball and the ball is in the air, and you're impeding the receiver, they will throw pass interference. O'Hara with the clap on first down. Looking to throw. Looking in zone, near sideline, caught. Did he get his feet in? Yes, C.J. Windham. First touchdown catch this season by C.J. Windham. And that is a great play, great catch, and great feet by C.J. Wyndham. He had a catch earlier on in the drive where he had to tiptoe the sideline, and now he does it for a touchdown. Great job. Fourth touchdown pass on the season by O'Hara. 
Two yard touchdown completion, 12 plays, 75 yards on the drive. And that is definitely Middle Tennessee's most impressive drive this evening. As Cruz Holt lines up the extra point attempt. And the thing I love about that drive, when they needed it the most, that's when they got it. Coach Stock has to be proud of his team for coming and putting together a touchdown drive. And it's a three-point ball game with 2.07 to go. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Now, if you're Middle Tennessee, you have two timeouts remaining. Your defense has played pretty well, but Western Kentucky's offense here in the second half has moved the ball just as well, if not better. Do you go for the onside kick, or do you try and kick it deep and, and hope for a stop? I think right now, you have to go for the onside kick. Um, you're trying to get a victory, so try to get the ball back. If you don't get the ball back, then you play defense. Um, and, I, and I just think that you go for the onside kick right here. It's like you said, WK, West Kentucky has been moving the ball since the end of the first half. And so you must try to be aggressive and go get the kick. And if all left fails, then play defense and try to get a stop. First touchdown pass on the night for Asher O'Hara. It's now 23 of 33, 217 yards. First game of the year that he has not thrown an interception. And it seems like Coach Stock is going with that mindset, being aggressive. Now three players to the right of Cruz Holt and... Timeout, Western Kentucky, their second, 30-second timeout. Western will burn their second timeout after seeing Middles formation. And the, the QB play on both sides by Pigram for Western Kentucky, by O'Hara for MTSU has been great. They're taking care of the ball in the air. And when you don't throw interceptions as a quarterback, you give your offense a chance to live another day, to see another day, and to make another play. And right now, O'Hara has his MTSU team with the opportunity to try to recover onside kit to try to go down and win the game. See if Middle Tennessee sticks with that same formation. The one thing that is very important, they must stay on side. You have one guy at the top of your screen, and now they move three to that near side for Holt, and he's not going to be the one to kick it. Will it go 10 yards? Doesn't matter. Western falls on it. Great heads up play. Uh, Steven Wachowski, the backup tied in. As we get a look here, it was number 44, Scott Payne, the backup place kicker, who put a boot on it. Ball didn't go 10 yards, didn't matter. Wachowski with a great heads up play to fall on it. Definitely great heads up play by him. You didn't want, you know, one of those cases like what happened in the Atlanta Falcons game where the ball eventually rolled over, so he just was aggressive and jumped on it. Now Middle Tennessee still has two timeouts. Western Kentucky with just one, but Western with great field position at their own 44-yard line. Excuse me, Middle's 44-yard line. Pigram will take it himself, spin out a one tackle, and be brought down at the 40-yard line right at the two-minute mark. So essentially, MTSU has, you know, that, that two-minute warning. Middle Tennessee, their second, 30-second timeout. One timeout left for middle, 159 to go. Please reset the game clock to 201. 201. 201. Definitely, MTSU has to come up with the stop. They cannot give up a first down, or that will seal the game. Pigram, the leading rusher tonight for Western Kentucky, 47 yards on 15 attempts. Of course, his sacks three times for 22 yards, that counts against him. 
Here's another look at the onside kick. Just didn't have enough, and it looked like they tried to get a Western Kentucky player to hit it before it went 10 yards, but didn't matter. As Wachowski was all over it. And if I'm the D coordinator, Coach Schaefer, I'm definitely dialing up pressure. I have to attack. Got to load the box, right? Got to load the box. If, you, if they get a first down, so what? You got, you got to go and be aggressive to try to get a stop right here. Second down and six. Moses in the backfield. Pigram's going to take it himself. He's got room at the middle, makes a couple of guys miss. He's got a first down. And that was a great play, and that is why the a running quarterback or a design QB runs are so important because the defense can't account for them. Middle takes timeout. their final Middle timeout. That's their third. Huge first Full down timeout. by Pigram. Great footwork on the read play. Definitely. That was a great side step. Great side step right there. Great play by Pigram. And we talked about it in the opener that WKU will go as far as he leads them. And right now, he's doing great on the ground and doing awesome in the air as well. But right now, they just need him on the ground as they attempt to run the clock out. Yeah, Pigram came into this game the leading rusher for Western Kentucky, 142 yards coming into tonight. The next best runner was Gage Walker, who we haven't seen since the first half. He had just 53 yards coming in to tonight after being one of the best running backs in the conference last year, second in the conference. But he hasn't touched the ball since the first quarter, since he fumbled. Yes, you're right about that. Um, and, and that's surprising. Like I said, Coach Helton, in the beginning of the week, talked about getting him going into this game. And I understand once you get in the game and, and one player may have it going, then the other, and you kind of go with the hot hand. So that may be the case tonight. And it appears to be working. Middle Tennessee out of timeouts, Western Kentucky. In victory formation, the first time that Tyrell Pigram has been under Cinder all night, and he's going to let the clock run until somebody tries to tackle him. And finally, a little extracurricular activity after the whistle. Yeah, I, I, you know, either you take the knee, but if you stand up, then you steal a live player. So um, I don't understand why Western Kentucky is getting so upset about that. If you don't choose to take the knee right away, then you are still a live player that can be tackled. Tyson Helton in his second year as the head coach of Western Kentucky, going to get his second straight win here in the 100-mile rivalry between Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. His dad, Kim, won the Conference USA Coach of the Year in 1996. And that makes them the second father-son duo to win the same Conference Coach of the Year award since Bobby and Terry Bowden. Bobby Bowden, Florida State, won it in 93 and 97. And then Terry Bowden won it with Clemson back in 03. So Tyson's dad, Kim, won it when he was the head coach of Houston back in 96 when Tyson was a freshman on that Cougar squad. There's a look at... Tyrell Pigram's numbers tonight. And, and I think the most important stat is no interceptions. And he takes care of the ball. And one final kneel down, and that will do it. Western Kentucky hangs on. Started out sloppy in that first quarter. Scoreless. Neither team could move the ball. But the Hilltoppers turned it into a battle of time of possession and field position and they walk away with their first win on the year they move to one and two middle tennessee oh and four to start the 2020 season ash asher o'hara finished the night 23 of 33 217 yards and a touchdown and tyrell pigram 21 of 36 two touchdown passes for the transfer quarterback from maryland so for Jeremy Kellum, I'm Jake Rose saying so long from Murfreesboro where the final score tonight is Western Kentucky 20, Middle Tennessee 17. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.
from Murfreesboro. So long, everybody.